Hello, thank you guys so much for jumping in to this uh, video with me. I got some fun questions in my Q&A on Instagram last week and somebody asked, can you answer the question how to know if you're with the right person? And I thought this would be a great opportunity to sit down and chat about it because I have a lot of thoughts and positive things to say on the subject. Um, just a little bit of background if you don't know anything about me, which is totally fine. Uh, my name is Marina. My husband and I have been married for six years, going on seven in May. We have a baby boy who's almost eight months old. So we also only dated for four months <laughs> and we got married eight months later, roughly. So we got married um, on the one year of our dating experience. Um, so that's just a little bit about me and I will say my husband Max has dated other people and I have also dated other people. So our short engagement to me was not the same as um, maybe other people's experiences or thoughts on our relationship because I, I personally think a positive to our short dating and engagement time is because we've had a relationship relationships outside of the two of us to kind of know and understand and compare if we felt like this was the best move. And I can honestly say it felt like a very strong move for the both of us. And I know that he feels that way as well. He's also the one editing this video. So if you're wondering if I'm speaking on behalf of him in any way that's untrue, I can promise you that it's very, I'm being as honest and upfront about the subject matter as possible because I believe in being honest about the side of relationships can be so important. So I hope it helps you guys and I'm going to jump into a few things. So I'm really excited to share about today. Number one, I, I am a faith-based woman. My husband is as well. We both grew up in, um, different types of faith, but we are now both Christians. And so I think that is a very important factor that we both were united in the Christian that in Christianity that we chose to walk as our own person in our adulthood, because that does affect how we believe and everything else that I'm laying out. So the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to how to know if you're with the right person I believe it is insurmountable and absolutely the best thing for you as an individual to know God. Knowing God sounds so vague and sometimes intimidating, but I can promise you that it is actually just so simple. I believe that God created the universe, the earth, the world, humankind. I believe that God made us so specific and he knows each and every intricate part about your life. So. I choose to have a relationship with God and I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins so that I can have a relationship with God. By having a relationship with God and choosing him as my Lord and Savior, I have access to the Holy Spirit who is on earth our guide. And in a sense, if any of that's confusing to you, what I say when I say I trust in God, I believe in God, and I know that the Holy Spirit guides me, he's literally just some, sometimes it can be as simple as like a shrug or a nudge or like that gut feeling that you have, that would be what I call the Holy Spirit's wisdom and helping guide me in my life. And I know that that's from the Lord. So that's how I live. And that's kind of how I'm going to talk throughout the rest of this video, just so you guys understand where I'm coming from with the key points that I want to talk about. So the first point is to know God. How do you know if you know God? I'm going to jump into some scripture on that really quick, just for background. In Romans chapter 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Basically, it means everything I've explained to you up until this point if you believe what I'm saying as well, and you are to believe it in your heart, you would be justified. And with your mouth, by saying it out loud and saying, this is what I believe, then you would be saved. And you're not doing it out of your actions. So we can do good things, but that doesn't save us. And this scripture is what it's trying to help shed light on. By being a good person, it's nice, 
but it doesn't bring us into salvation with the Lord because I don't live for myself and say, I'm such a good person. I can get myself to heaven by just being good. The thing is, no one's perfect, which is why Jesus came and died for our sins, because he lived a perfect life on this earth. And that is the difference between Jesus and me. He lived a perfect life on this earth. I believe that he came, rose, and died from the dead. And no matter how hard I try, no matter how many good things I do, I'm still going to be a flawed human. So that's what this verse means in Romans 10. And let's also jump to Ephesians 2 because I think it's worth mentioning as well. It says, Ephesians 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not a result of work so that no one may boast. Reiterating the same thing. I can't boast about the fact that I'm doing so many good things and it gives me access to heaven. So, those are just a couple scriptures I wanted to point out on when it comes to what does it mean by knowing God? Because it does affect our relationships, whether it's romantic or even with our friendships and with our family. So by knowing God, I have access to Holy, the Holy Spirit. And that is going to be a huge part of what we're talking about today when it comes to how do you know if you're the, with the right person? As I stated before, my husband and I have both dated other people. He has dated girls. He he has always, I love to joke with him, like he's never had that awkward phase of, you're my good friend. Why would I um, think of you as like a romantic way? My husband was literally born, um, can I say as a Latin lover, is that allowed? I don't know if that's okay. If it's not okay, I'm sure he'll cut it out. But my husband was literally born with an innate sense of, I am in love with this girl. Like I, he was probably flirting as a baby and it never stopped, to be honest with you. So I like to joke with him about that because in the movies or in TV, you'll see these kids who go through a season where they're like, oh, why do I feel so different about this girl? Like she used to be my friend, but now I, I feel like I'm catching feels and they don't really know how to describe it. My husband has always had the feels. He never had that awkward um, transition of we're always friends. Like he, I think he's always had in his mind a crush or a girlfriend. And <laughs> me, however, so we both have dated other people, him apparently since the moment he was born, um, me not so much. I didn't start dating until I was, I think, 14. I th had my first boyfriend all the way up until when I met my husband. So in some of those relationships, uh, we learned about ourselves a lot. I learned about how to be more patient, and I learned that especially from my husband, and I he used to probably learn some other things from me too, but he's not here to speak on behalf of it. So, um, the reason I wanted to bring that up is because it does help that I'm able to know those previous relationships were not it. There are two different times in my life or three, actually, now that I think about it, there's three times in my life where I have prominently heard the voice of God. The first one was when he told me to go into full-time ministry. Um, I did three gap years of ministry before college, and that was absolutely calling, and I'm so very grateful I did. It was very vital to my growth, um, and I think it helped me a lot before getting married as well. And then the second time I heard from the voice of God was when I was in college and I was considering dating this person, and God so gently, in the middle of my quiet time, when I asked him, I said, Lord, is this something that, you know, I am okay to do because I want to live in your blessing, but this person's pursuing me and I'm, I want to look into it. And the Holy Spirit just so strongly just said, no. And I was ticked. Long story short, I ended up dating this person for it just dragged on for way long and it was, it was unhealthy and it was just, I wasn't happy and it felt like so much weird work. It felt like work to make sure that they were okay and that they were healthy. It felt like a lot of weird work to make sure that the two of us were all right. And then it made me when I was by myself, just individually not okay. All of it was so unhealthy and it, it, took over all of my mind in such a deep way. I couldn't focus on other things because I was just so worried about how do I fix all of this to make sure it's going to work okay. When I already knew that the Lord had said no, and then he hadn't given me like a thumbs up for this situation. So 
knowing that. And that's how it felt. And that was just such a sticky relationship. And it just dragged out and it was confusing and manipulative. And all of it was just a really big mess. So after that relationship finally had closed the chapter and I felt like I had finally just given it back to the Lord and was starting to walk towards Him in such a different and new light, I was certain that I had missed out on the blessing of my husband. I grew up with this teaching that um, obedience brings blessing and disobedience brings conflict. And in my mind, logically, if the Lord had said, no, don't date this person, and because I disobeyed, it felt like I must have missed out on the blessing of obedience. So now I am not in that relationship with this person anymore, and it's getting ready to be summer. I have finished a whole nother school year. It's getting ready to be summer. And I had met this guy at church in March, and I didn't think much of it. And he wanted to pursue me, but I wasn't into it because I had just gotten out of that messy, icky, all that stuff. And I kid you not, and this is the third instance where I heard the voice of the Lord. The Holy Spirit was so excited. There was one instance when I'm, I'm doing my devotions again. I'm sitting with the Word. I'm sitting with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit was giddy within my heart. And I just heard Him almost as if he was clapping like this. We're going to meet your husband this summer. Just absolutely so ecstatic for me. The most amount of words that I think I had really heard from the Lord. And it was just as clear as day. But, you know, sometimes you can hear these things and you're still not sure. And, you know, I didn't know, like, that could mean, you know, we have free will. It's like, well, is it going to be this guy or, or could it be that guy? And so when Max finally approached, I was like, okay, I'm going to have an open heart and I'm going to have an open mind because the Lord said I would meet my husband this year or this summer. And so if I say no to everybody who asks me out, then how will I know if I, I may have missed the right person? So Max approached me and he asked me if I would go to dinner with him and we did. And it was just the most wonderful first date. And it was really sweet, really blessed. And I would love to point out that during this dating time, the biggest green flag for me with Max is that I did not have any icky butterflies. The previous times I had gone out with other people or that old relationship I was in, if there was any amount of butterflies, I quickly learned the difference that when I was going out with Max, I felt so much peace. I felt joy. I felt true friendship with him. And all those other relationships where I felt icky butterflies, I was tense. I felt insecure. I felt like I didn't even know how to be myself around them. It was very uncomfortable, very anxious filled, very fear filled, but it felt like, oh, I know that these are butterflies. And, you know, in movies and in television, it can look so romanticized to be scared, basically. You're in a relationship scared. And I can honestly say, anytime I hear someone talk about butterflies now, red flag in my mind. But, you know, sit down and talk about it. Like, really write down what do those butterflies make you feel like? Is it anxious, scared, nervous? Is it peaceful, exciting, a friendship? Is it blessed? That's honestly how I look at the difference between the two. So I am so glad that I got to meet my husband when I did. I'm so glad that I'm able to look at the differences between those two. And I honestly, a lot of people think that it is so illogical to get married so fast. And then other people, especially in the church, get married very quickly. There's a lot of flack for that on either side. Everyone is made so different. Everyone is made individually, you know, on your own journey. So I will suggest, let's just stop comparing. Just take a second to step out of the comparison zone Let's not think about, well, they had a relationship like that, so ours must work. Max and I have definitely had other people come up to us and they're like, um, how long did you date for? And they, they want to know all these specifics because they're using our relationship to compare maybe how their life should be. And that's just not the case for everybody. We're all 
different and that's good. It's a good thing. Okay. So when it comes to these moments, I'm going to jump into Genesis because that's actually what I'm studying right now. And it's a cool place for me to jump into for, um, today's topic of conversation for one specific reason. How do you know if you're with the right person is a question people have been asking since the dawn of time. All right. In Genesis, we've got Isaac and Rebecca. This is chapter 24. And this is so cool as an example for us to remember that even back then they can get concerns, go to the Lord, hear from the Lord and be like, is that really it? Like, are, are we sure? And the Lord can answer so quick too. So um, essentially Abraham has a son, Isaac, Isaac grows up to be a grown man and doesn't yet have a wife. So Abraham tells his servant, I need you to go to this land. That's not where we live. I want you to find a wife for my son and bring her back here. A little bit of pressure. (laughs) Don't pick the wrong one, right? So the servant is kind of very um, centered on for this story because it's his job to go find the person for um, Isaac to marry, which is a hard thing to do, especially since he's not even from what we know, a relative of Isaac. So, um, Abraham has the servant make a promise and the servant promises that he's going, he swears that he is going to, um, do his best to find the right person for Isaac. All right. Jumping into verse 12. This is the servant praying to the Lord. He says, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let the young woman to whom I shall say, please let down your jar that I may drink and who shall say, drink, and I will water your camels. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I shall know that you have sworn steadfast love to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her water jar on her shoulder. Before he was even done praying to God, God answered this prayer. The Lord loves marriage. He loves correct unity. He loves when we find the kind of person that he wants us to be with. And when I say it like that, I personally come from the belief that we have the free will. We have free will whether or not we want to choose the Lord to be our Lord and Savior. We also have the free will for him to be like, go marry that person. That one's going to be a good pick for you. Like when the Lord was so excited for me, you're going to find your husband this summer. And if Max had asked me out and I would, out of my own free will was just like, nah, not you. I'm not going to go out with you. I won't give you a chance. I could have missed out by not giving it a shot. And yet I'm so glad I gave Max a shot. I'm so glad that I remembered that the Lord was excited for me. And that when he asked me if I would go on a date with him, that I said, yes. So I will point out one thing that I think is super important and very potentially overlooked or under talked about in my experience in this life is that you do not have to marry somebody you don't want to marry. And that doesn't mean that God is rooting for you to marry someone you don't want to marry either. My concern when I was younger was that God would want me to marry someone I don't want to marry. And God is so kind. He's so gracious. And it's honestly... I think a very big fear tactic that kept me from being open-minded about dating other people. I felt like if I didn't even think that they were, I don't know, funny or, or someone that I got along with that I was afraid that I would be stuck with someone that didn't make me laugh and that I didn't even have a good friendship with. And those are really important things to me. And the idea of Maybe, maybe for you, it's, you're worried you're going to be forced to marry someone you're, you don't find cute or forced to marry somebody who maybe they're, uh, they're, you know, something that is just 
not a correct union, something that is important to you in your marriage, the Lord cares about all these things and he cares about even the little things too. So why would he not care about these big things in our life? He does. He really, truly does. So before the servant had even finished his prayer, God was like that one right there. Answers his prayer. Rebecca comes out and long story short, he meet, the servant ends up meeting Rebecca's family and he explains his prayer and how he, you know, it seems like the Lord has really blessed this as a potential union. And he ends up bringing her back to Isaac. And Isaac's like, this is incredible. He marries her and eventually, you know, there's more to the story, but eventually they have two sons. They have twins. So how do we know, how do you know you're with the right person? Know God. Know the Holy Spirit. Know the difference between the voice of God and the fear. And don't let fear be what drives you to how you should live your life. Living in fear is just going to, honestly, there are so many cases where, where we can see that living in fear can hurt your body. Like even physically can just cause you to not be the best version of yourself. Imagine your mental state too. But when we live with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, it is like, breathing in fresh air. It is peace. It is joy. And I am such a happy person to be living for the Lord instead of for myself. So know God, know the Holy Spirit, and rely on the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit some of these questions. Pray, ask the Lord to give you signs. I mean, the Lord wants a relationship with you, right? He wants you to sit down with him and read his word and get to know him and understand his character and his heart because he is genuinely so misunderstood by so much of the world. Because if the world really did understand him and his character, so many more people would be living for the Lord and be free, able to just and give their life back to the Lord and give back stress. It doesn't mean that I live a stress-free life. No, it just means I know how to jump back into the Word and say, God, I know you're here. I know days are hard. I know I feel like I can't hear you or see you or whatever that season may hold for you. But having the Word and being able to know God genuinely is what's going to make a big difference for these kinds of big questions, whether it's how do I know if I'm with the right person or how do I know if I should go to this college or how do I know if I should take a gap year like I did. So That is a huge, huge, huge part of how we live our life and make these big decisions. Number three, now reflects later. I would not necessarily say it is an exact mirror of later, which is why I say reflects. We should change, right? It would be weird if how I behaved at three years old is how I behave at now 30 years old. Change happens. There is, I think, some foundational parts of our personality that make us who we are, and maybe that morphs and changes over time, but you know, you should change in maturity in other ways, but when it comes to maybe the kinds of things that make you laugh, um, maybe your favorite color, I don't know, parts of what makes you who you are now should reflect some of later. So let me get into it. Um, The relationship you're in now, Do you have fun? Do you guys laugh? Do you guys get creative and figure out ways that you can love each other? One of my favorite questions that Max still asks me to this day is, how can I love you better? And that started way at the front of our relationship. And if I hadn't seen him asking that in the beginning and trying to get to know me better, care about me, go out of his way to love me, then I probably likely might not see it later. And it doesn't mean that there aren't relationships out there where it used to be like that in the beginning and now it's not. It just means that there's a chance to revive it because that kind of character in someone has been there before. And it doesn't mean that someone who's never been like that can't be like that again, but that's kind of not the conversation we're having right now. I would say that's a, you're already married You're already married and you're trying to revive your marriage. We're talking about you're dating someone and you want to know if this is a good person to stick with. The commonly used example of this would be how does your 
boyfriend treat his mom. My boyfriend, when Max was my boyfriend, unfortunately his mom had passed away, so I never got a chance to meet my, what now would be mother-in-law, but he has a sister-in-law. He had, I think his brother had dated somebody else when we were um, when we were dating. So I got to see how he interacted with his sister-in-law. I saw how he interacted with other women at church um, who were he wasn't involved with romantically. I saw how he treated his nieces and his nephews. So I definitely took time to observe how did he even treat like my grandma and my mom. And it was a good way for me to observe what kind of man that he is. But also I really did trust the Holy Spirit with our relationship because um, I, th I think that the Lord would have given me alarm bells if I had seen him do something that looked like a questionable action with how he interacted with somebody else. One of my favorite questions to ask is how do you argue? In Max and I's relationship, one of our first big, huge arguments at the beginning of our relationships was Max misunderstood a joke I made and he took it for serious. That is communication. So. We got in an argument about it. He goes silent. I'm not the silent type when it comes to an argument. I wanna talk about every single thing. Like I wanna list out all of the ways that I'm feeling. I wanna understand exactly how you're feeling and I wanna get down to the nitty gritty so we can fix it as fast as possible. He wants to sit in the fields and think about it. He's gotta marinate it. He wants to be alone. And so it took time for us to learn how to argue with each other. But I saw that throughout our whole dating and engaged period before wedding day. I didn't get married in the middle while we were still figuring some of this out and feel like uneasy about how we argue. I, we learned how to argue well during that dating period that I felt really good marrying him on our wedding day. So, you know, arguing about other things, big and small, because if somebody gets really offended by something um, that's really small and, and you can't seem, he, they can't seem to like figure that out or communicate with you in a way that helps each other feel seen and known and understood in a small way, it's going to make it harder in a big way. There are also traces of characteristics that maybe some of these small arguments, they don't forgive well. Because it, what they could be doing is putting them in their back pocket and using it as ammo for future larger arguments. I would also look out for that kind of characteristic as well. Could be bitterness and unforgiveness, and that's something to talk about with somebody. And if they're not able to talk about it with you in a vulnerable way, where they're understanding that you're supposed to be a safe place before marriage, if, if this is like a serious relationship, that that's what it's looking like. There needs to be trust, vulnerability, and uh, a common ground there for each of you to be able to have that kind of conversation. So arguing, it should be something that also at the end of an argument, you should be able to feel closer with each other because it should bring you in a further bigger form of unison where it's like, okay, I can trust this person because I was able to explain how I feel, say I'm sorry, explain that I was even embarrassed about what happened. So how do you argue? That one's super important. Take some time to like think about past instances and if it doesn't look like something that feels healthy and growing and getting better with future arguments, I would maybe get a second opinion on how other people argue around you and see, like trust someone with good insight on that and see um, what they think about what you have to say and how it's made you feel. And one of the last parts I wanna talk about when it comes to the now reflects the later is the commitment. I had a friend in high school once who asked her boyfriend at the time like, so where's this headed? Like, what do you think about like us just curious on what you think. And we were actually, now that I think about it, we were all graduated from high school. He flipped out and did not know what to do. And she was not asking him like, I want to get married tomorrow. She was just kind of doing a pulse check on the relationship. He ended up breaking up with her and that relationship, they never got back together or anything, but it is a good sign that she was able to check in with him and he being able to see that there was not a commitment there from the get-go for him to want to say. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people don't ever ask that question and just continue to date for a very long period of time. In contrast, some people have had that conversation and they do say, 
yeah, I want to marry you. I see this being in us being together in the long haul. It's okay to, to not know. It's okay for someone to say, that's a great question. I honestly don't know right now, but I know I enjoy hanging out with you. And I, I know I spend, I enjoy spending my time together. That's an acceptable answer in my opinion. But at one point, if we've been dating for two, three, four, five years, and that's the same answer, I would say it's time to cut ties. Only because you're valuable, it's, it would be great for you to find somebody that values you enough to say, yes, I don't want to let you go. I think that we've got something great here. It's okay if those things take time. And again, not comparing relationships with like other people's timelines, like how Max and I dated for X amount of time versus someone else, you know, who dated for a similar amount of time. Um, removing that comparison, just being able to look at with the person that you're with, if they're saying they want commitment, but haven't shown progression towards that, at some point we got to know if we need to cut ties and move on or if this is going to be for real. And I just think that you're worth finding the right person. There's so much fear when it comes to letting go of a relationship just because there's previous um, foundation. One of the things that is really hard to come to terms with from what I've seen is when you've lost somebody that was really close to you. The thing about losing people is that I don't know if you're ever fully ready to say goodbye to someone you love and wish that would stay here forever. And when you're in a relationship at the time of a loss, there can be this form of a bond that feels like you can never date anybody else. And it is okay to let go of a long-term relationship if it's not healthy, if it's not progressing you towards the kind of person you want to be. I don't know about you, but every single day I look at myself and I look down at what are the lists on my to-do list? What are the things that I want to be? Every New Year's, like, do we want to stay the same type of person that we are? I personally don't want to. I want to grow. I want to become stronger in my relationship with the Lord. I want to become a better mother, a better wife, a better friend. So if the people that we're choosing to spend our lives with, maybe they want that for us, but they don't want it for themselves. Or maybe they want it for themselves, but they don't want it for you. Just start asking some questions. If you want to, you could get a pen and paper and start writing some of these down. You could do like a pro and con list. There's a lot of thoughts about that. I don't know. In some ways, if it's a pros and cons list, then then maybe it's already time to say goodbye. Um, I was shooting that one from the hip, so I hadn't pre-thought about that before saying it. But um, ask questions, ask a lot of questions. And if someone's not patient enough to sit through those questions with you, or if you feel like after doing it by yourself, you've gotten to a certain point, um, it should, it should show, uh, you kind of where you're at with that relationship. And in a lot of ways, getting married is a leap of faith. Even when you know you're with the right person, it can be a leap of faith but I personally believe in being married for the long haul. If we don't take our marriage vows seriously before we get married, will we take them seriously after? If someone doesn't believe in being committed to you now, will they believe in being committed to you later? Maybe. God can do anything, but choose wisely, trust the Lord, and believe that God wants truly the best for you. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope that was encouraging to you. I had so much fun getting to share a little bit about my story with my husband and knowing that God is just so good and cares so much about all of the little things and so much more about the big things and has an even better vision for my life than I could have picked for myself. And I know it's true for you too. If you want to hang out with me again, like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Let me know if you want me to touch on any other subjects. This is the first time I've sat down to do a form like this in this type of um, 
topic. Normally we do little vlogs or family things like that. So if you want me to sit down and go over another subject, please leave it in the comment section below. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time.